today I'm going to talk about Love and Hip Hop New York Season 5 Episode 7. I have my notes. This was actually a good episode because it gave me a lot to talk about. Um, it starts off, my eyes, I don't know why they grab my glasses. But it starts off with Rich going to see, you know, Radio DJ K Slay or whatever. And, um, K Slay is doing a photo shoot with the... Is she still a stripper? I don't know. Johnny Blaze. And I've known Johnny Blaze just from like being a stripper. I think she's from Houston maybe. But I know she's a stripper. I know she has some dealings and beefs and stuff with Drake on the internet and did some shit with Drake. I just know she be on the internet a lot, a lot. Just to buy being in beefs and starving shit and all that kind of stuff. So, um... I don't follow her. I'm not saying that. I just know a lot of people post about her. But anyway, so K Slate wants Rich to work with her or whatever. But Rich always say, <clears throat> I, it just never fails with females on this show and Rich. Come to find out, Rich smashed. He and smashed Johnny Blaze. And I'm like, Rich, who are you not sucking? And girls, why are y'all still fucking rich like he relevant like that? Like, you know, well, some girls, it's a lot of girls that will sleep with producers and promoters and security guards at the club just to get in. And I've seen it happening. And I'm like, rich? Okay, rich. Like, everybody want to fuck rich. Whatever. So, you know, Rich was like, I don't know, because that bitch is crazy. We had problems. When we stopped fucking with each other, she put my number on the internet. She put screenshots of text messages, my pictures. Just, you know, she like a baby um, bobblehead. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, you know, k is just like, no, you know, she's hot right now. She can spit and... All this bullshit, she good and all this bullshit, he just like trying to hype her up so Rich can work with her. But I'm like, you didn't have to do that. Rich was going to work with her anyway. Um, so he said, yeah, okay. And K-Slay makes Johnny come talk to Rich or whatever and smooth things over. I'm like, whatever. That's how I felt with them. Or whatever. Um... He was like, no more crazy shit. She was just like, okay, cool. So then we have Diamond. She's in New York still. Um, she's dating somebody new now. Um, she's dating this producer named Rock. I've never heard of him. But I don't look for producers, so I don't know. I mean, you know, if they know West Coast producers, I, I don't know. I'm just not really getting into, like, producers and promoters and stuff doing being on YouTube. But other than that, I ain't never heard of these people. No shade to him. I don't know what he done. They didn't put his credits up there. I don't know. But she's liking him. He's liking her. I think they went to go get some ice cream or something. But it just seemed like he was trying to bring up Cisco. Not her. Because she was like something about. He was like have you thought about your past? And she was like no. So I was like that's room to keep the conversation going. Not dwell in the conversation. And that's what he did. That's why I was looking at him a little side eye. Because I'm like. Why are you bringing up a dude? Like, that's bitch made Like, keep it going. Like, it ain't got nothing to do with you and her. She ain't worried about him. Why are you? So, he just wants to put it out there that Cisco is a fraud. He's lame. He's not who he says he is and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, girl, girl. We ain't heard of him either. But, okay. That's something to throw up in Cisco's face, I guess. Whatever. So then you got Yandy and Mandisi, and Yandy, Mandisi's mom, Yandisi, Mandisi's mom um, at the house, they're cooking for him when he come in because Man Yandy is still tired of the problems with Samantha. She like, our wedding is coming up and he needs to deal with this. So Yandisi's still a motherfucking kid talking about he don't want to deal with all of this and he's telling because his mom, he was telling his mom that the little boy should stay with him and she be the weekend mom or whatever. And her, his mom was like, have you told her? And she, he was like, I shouldn't have to. And I'm like, why not? If that's how you feel, why can't you tell her that? Like, y'all need to have open communication. 
Then he was talking, he got like frustrated or whatever and he was about to leave out the room. And he was like, you go talk to her, you go talk to her. And he brought up um, Samantha's mom saying, you know, what she do to him, he need to fix this. And I'm sitting there like, she's not saying nothing wrong, but okay, we'll get into that or whatever. And so he was telling his mom to go talk to her, talking about, oh, we'll go sit down and talk to her. And I'm like, for what? Y'all are grown. Y'all not have 16 and 17 year old people where y'all need y'all parents. Why did your mama and her mama need to talk? Or her and your mom need to talk. That's your goddamn son. This is why the problems occurred because you didn't know how to handle your business as a motherfucking man. Period. Point blank. Regardless of if she's saying she was going to take you to court, you and Yandy should have dealt with that situation as a couple and said okay. But to go involve y'all mamas in it was real childish to me. Um, Amina and her sister, they finished yoga and now they're talking in the park about Peter and Amina and, um, Tara's situation or whatever. And I'm just over it. I'm over it because you keep sticking in that bullshit and then she's talking about she's going to go to Germany, she's going to take the baby, she might stay, she might not come back. And I'm like, okay, that's a little pump move. Amina, I know what you're saying, like you do want to start over, you don't, I just hope you don't do it out of malice, you know what I'm saying, or try to keep the baby away from him, still the father, as fucked up Peter is, he's still the father, so I don't want you to just go out there and just not come back without telling him, if you're not going to come back, that's on you, but at least give him, you know, that, that you're going to go and you might not come back, just tell him that part, but Cause if it was him, I'd be going off too. So I don't think that's right. And I just hope y'all think about that shit because your baby is gonna suffer in the long run. Um, come to find out, Tara still don't want the kids around her. So Tara's still playing real childish ass games to me. And I'm like, okay, I can see that. The bitch is childish, whatever. Um, Cisco and Rich meet up and they're shooting pool. And Cisco is telling him all about the drama with Tasha and Atlanta and um, how he got mad talking about she wanted to be with another man and he cool with that but the man came because he said that Tasha wanted another man and Richard was like but you got another woman so what's the problem and he was like it's not about her having another man it's about her bringing men around his kids and I was sitting there like nigga it she will know what's best for her kids I would believe She's been around them. She's the one who's been raising them. I think she would know what's best and when it would be soon enough or not soon enough to meet her motherfucking kids. I don't think Tasha's that type. Um, whatever. So now he wants to work things out with Diamond now that Tasha's not fucking with him. And Rich pulled his card like, you know you're not, because, um, I knew something was going to happen when Rich started going through that goddamn phone. Rich threw the phone on the damn pool table like, that's your bitch. And she had pictures with Rock on Instagram. So now Cisco's feeling salty and butthurt and all that because Diamond had moved on from his motherfucking ass. Talking about that's too soon. And I'm like, couldn't date me then. I, I told y'all my mom, I'm fucking with somebody the next motherfucking day. Oops. So you won't want me no more. Nigga, you're not going to play with my motherfucking cellist. And then all of a sudden when you want me back, then you get to get me back. Hell no. So, I wasn't mad at Diamond for moving on quickly and professionally like Justin J. Say, I was not mad at that. Um, but I don't want you to rush and take your child around him, Diamond. And I do, I, I did remember that, um, just remember that they had that talk about her daughter and she did tell him about her daughter. She was going to be up in front and honest with him and I said, okay. But please don't take your daughter around him right now. We don't know his intentions for love and hip hop. So, don't do it. Leave your daughter with me. Please, I just hope we don't go through this season and all of a sudden her daughter is meeting this man. I really don't. Um, moving on from that. Damn, this show is good. I got all these damn notes. Yandy and Tara sit down. I don't care. I didn't care. Only thing I cared about is when, when Yandy said uh, something about Amina. And she was like, well, did she care that you was, she slept with your man? And I'm like... You need to tell your friend that. Because your friend slept with um, Peter other, you know, fucking around with Peter while he was with somebody. So you should ask your friend, did she think it was fair? Just saying. 
Don't talk about Amina and your homegirl sitting at the table and she did the same motherfucking thing Amina did. I'm just saying. Um, let me get this out the goddamn way of them since I'm talking about them. Peter goes home. He got a surprise for her. She's still pissed off packing and shit with phone baby clothes. And he tells her that Tara put it in his court for the kids to meet and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there like... This should have been happening, but whatever. So, she cool with that, but she ain't cool with him. Then this motherfucker had the nerve to say, can we have a ceremony? For what? For what? Because Tara don't want you. Please, I mean, don't be fucking stupid over this dude. Like, I understand he ain't played you, he's still playing you, but I hope by the end of this damn season, you don't rise up with him. Um, Cisco in the studio. <laughs> Cisco in the motherfucking studio and oh one thing about that meet up with Tara and him I do agree with them when they said Peter need to explain to them damn kids not well both of them as parents need to sit down and explain to them kids just open honest and just say it say what it is but I do understand where they Yandy was coming from and say Peter needs to do this um Cisco at the studio with some dude named Uncle Murderer is that his name yeah I ain't heard of him either. But that's what happens when you don't promote your local artists and stuff. Don't nobody know about them. And then they get on these shows and don't be like, huh? That's why I support local artists out here the way I do. I'm just saying. Um, so they in the studio. He calls Diamond to the studio. Diamond come in like, what the fuck do you want? I'm not going to argue with you. Why don't you call me down here? And all he care about is... She dating somebody else. And why are you out here? You should have went back to California. He was just such a bitch in this whole segment that I was like, I was for once on Diamond's side. Because I would have reacted the same way she did him. Like, what does it matter? Who's my new boo? Why I got a new boo? Um, what the fuck? I'm single. I'm not with you. Were you worried about that when you was fucking and making another baby? I was so here with Diamond going off on him because I'm like, you have no room. No room. And you guys are not together. No room. But then he said, what was crazy when she said he begged her to come to New York. And I'm like, bitch, um, back that up. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But I was just like, that is fucking crazy. They argument ho was stupid. Um, she called him a fraud, told him what her, her boyfriend said, excuse <coughs> but she told him what her boyfriend said or whatever, and she didn't say his name, but he was like, you can bring that nigga to the studio, you can bring him here, to the... and I'm sitting there like, for what? Why? Are you butt hurt because somebody hit a nerve and told you the truth? Because we ain't heard of you, so apparently, I don't know, I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, she... They jump up. She pushed him in the face and all that kind of stuff. And I swear it looked like he was going to hit her back if that security wouldn't have been right there. He would have hit her. You could tell all up in his face he would have hit her. Then he said, bitch, get out the studio. She was like, bitch, your mama a bitch. I said, all that shit. Here we go. It's a little black girl thing. Yo, if I'm a bitch, your mama's a bitch. Girl. Girl. We in another generation. Find something else new to say. Just saying. Anyway, Rich and Johnny Blaze, they sit down and talk and come to find out when they were fucking around, she got arrested and he started fucking somebody else. So she was mad. She want him to apologize. He want her to apologize for posting all his shit. They both apologize, whatever. All she want to do is work. Who cares? I don't. He tells her rules and regulations is no more social media beef. Okay. This is what gets y'all stars and... Well, not star. This is what you get you people from reality show famous is their Twitter beefs and social media beefs. And so it's going to be really hard for her to not do that. Rich, um, no, yeah, no. Peter, I wrote the wrong name now. He spends the night at Tara's house. She's not home. Then he go home the next day after the kids get out of school. Oh, I did that already, my bad. But that's what happened. And I was sitting there like, oh, yeah, same old motherfucking shit. Tara, please rise up with this motherfucker, because really, really, uh-uh. Still spending night over there, and, and it wasn't the first time since the trip. Come on. Seeing Rich and Precious Paris go 
um, play miniature golfing and everyone to talk business and still have fun at the same time. So he's asking Sam, what is she doing? And now she wants to have this event for suicide prevention and she wants stars and she wants this and food and money and da 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 da. So he tells her to call Chrissy. She was like, I don't want to because Chrissy is wants to do some things with Jean Santana right now. And Richard was like, that's the way to get our mind off of it. So Sam was cool with that. But as they talk in Paris is over there, you know, like, what about me? You ain't send me no music. You're supposed to send me some music. He was like, didn't you just do a video? So she was like, yeah. And he was, and so they start arguing over management and um, how much people going to make. And I understood both sides. I understood her side as an artist. Like, I need to work. I need to be out there. I need to eat. And I understand his sides. Like, you can't just be putting any and everything out there because then you're going to be a one hit wonder or a flop, either or. So I see both of their point of views. Sam was uncomfortable like a motherfucker. Like, this ain't got shit to do with me. So then you got Mandisi and his mom. And that's the only thing I've heard about talking about. Mandisi and his mom and um, Judy. Yeah, his mom, Judy, and then you got Samantha and her mom, Kim. So, they sit down, and they start talking, and DC was like, you know, Kim, you, you sent me, you, you threatened me or something, talking about fix it. So, then the mama jumps, his mama jumps in about her threatening him, and she was like, you know it wasn't a damn threat. And I understand what she was saying. She was just telling him... Look, y'all need to fix this bullshit. Because that's how she said, like, y'all need to fix it or I'm coming after you or whatever. But it wasn't like, I don't think it was in a malicious way. I think she was just getting on his case, you know, like a mother-in-law. Or, you know, just a cool person that he cool with. Man, DC just pumped his mama up from head up. So, um, then they start talking about how, how do they want to do this with the little boy? And she wanted to keep him Monday through Friday. Medici was like, no, I'm not going to turn it to a weekend, Dad. I've had him all this time. And she was like, somebody needs to help him with his homework. And I'm sitting there like, well, Yandy's there, ain't she? I understand she works and all that. But come on now, that was a dumb excuse. And so she was like, um, they start arguing about that. The mom kept, his mom kept jumping in. Her mom kept jumping in. And I kept saying, this is why this should have been y'all conversation. So, um, they start talking about, oh, Kim said that when he comes, because they was like, how do you know, how do you know he not doing his homework or something or some bullshit. And Kim was like, because you want to know how we know, because when he comes to our house, he's having a hard time and he's stuttering and stuff. So, Judy was like, well, maybe he just don't want to be around you. And I'm like, that is fucked up to say. That's. Now, maybe, you know what I'm saying, he don't want to do his homework, maybe, you know what I'm saying, it's some issues with the little boy that need to be resolved, but to just say he don't want to be around, like, really? Then she start calling the girl, she called the girl something, a fraud, or, I don't remember, but she called her something, and Samantha was like, how old are you, and I think she was getting ready to say, how old are you, knowing words like that or something, and before she could really get to say it, Judy had threw her down whatever she was drinking on Samantha and her mom. So Kim jumps up ready to whoop ass and I was all motherfucking here for it because it was unfucking called for. I was just like, what? is she trying to get TV time? What was So Mandisi was like, oh shit, I ain't gonna never I'm really not gonna get to see Mandisi's now because Bitch, you start this bullshit for no fucking reason. So now, man, DC's scared. He got to go and try to fix this shit with Kim and Samantha because his mama and just went fucking bad shit, fucking crazy. Knowing these people want to take this boy to court. Knowing he got a fucking court case and you popping off on camera like that in front of him. Come on. That's not a good look for him or his situation. <sighs> she was irritating me and I was just wishing Kim would have got to that ass. I was wishing Kim would have got to that ass because she was wrong as fuck. And um, so Mandy C goes outside and he's talking to them or whatever. And he's trying to smooth things out with Samantha. Like, you know, I apologize to my mom. I didn't know that it was going to go like that. She didn't even get, let nobody get to talk. 
and um he just wasn't here for his mom but i'm like nah he trying to fix this shit so she don't go to court and he take her son i don't know just both parts of that maybe he was maybe he wasn't i don't know but you know she was like he said do you think our moms can apologize to each other and i'm sitting there like not no not, not kim not right now not today because mm -mm. he feel like it's gonna just it should have stayed between them which i've been saying ain't gotta do with y'all parents y'all grown motherfucking people but okay so he goes and talks to kim he trying to hug kim kim walking back like uh-uh you uh-uh uh -uh. and i was all here for her because she still want to fight kim still ready to whoop some ass so um you know maybe he apologized for his mom and they hug it out, all three of them hug it out and say they're going to fix it, blah, blah, blah. When she get in that car, you can still tell her she was mad the way she slammed that damn door. And I was just like, tell Judy to come outside. Fuck that establishment. Let Judy come outside. Tell your mama to come outside. That's all I'm thinking. But anyway, that's my review for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 5, Episode 7. Tell me what y'all thought about it. I really thought this was a cool episode because it had me a lot to talk about. Um, make sure you guys check out new YouTuber Callie Butterfly. Today is her first day of doing YouTube videos. So we need to go show our girl some love because she's been a subscriber for a long time. And she, to a lot of people, comment on a lot of people's stuff that I see. So now she wants to start her YouTube channel. So we got to show her some love. So go to Callie, C-A-L-I, Butterfly. Um... And let her know the ghetto view sent you. And let's get her numbers up. Just like we do everybody else. And I'll be back for Black Ink Crew. Make sure you check out Ashley Miller and Mike B. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Peace out. Oh, check out Color Me Pink too. Keisha Irvin from Color Me Pink channel. Also, I love her RTR shades reviews for Love & Hip Hop and stuff like that. So go check her out. Peace.